lots of fun today, lots of lessons, lots of inspiration coming from Ali all the way from Washington State. She is bubbly, chatty and friendly and she is a military nurse who has a story of dramatic improvements from inflammatory seronegative rheumatoid arthritis. So let's go across now to Ali and uh, find out how much she's uh, improved by following the Patterson program and all of its aspects from diet, exercise, supplements, and so on. How are you, Ali? I'm doing really well. Thank you so much for meeting with me today. I've always wanted to be one of your success stories. So here I am, a success story. Thank you to the Patterson program. It, it's super exciting. And, you know, we just spent a few minutes going through this before we hit record and you've given me a quick snapshot. Perhaps you might, for the benefit of our audience here, give us an idea of your transformation and just a real short summary before we go into all the detail. Sure. Um, so I was diagnosed, or I guess not diagnosed, but my journey started back in the spring of 2015. Um, I began having lots of symptoms um, that I could have Googled and figured that they were rheumatoid arthritis symptoms. Um, I was put on about 11 different medications over the last four years. Um, none of them except prednisone were successful for me personally. Um, however, once I started the lifestyle changes, um, even, uh, as much as the dietary changes, I would say they are equally as important that, um, I listened from the Patterson program and I feel almost hundred percent better. I do have an occasional bad day, but I would live a very normal life. No, it's, it's just so exciting, isn't it? I mean, how does it feel to be able to say that and to know that you're in such a better shape and what always fires me up with excitement is to know that your future looks better. Yeah. And I think definitely it's so exciting. And I think like, I feel great now compared to how I felt before, but I think that also leaves room for more improvement. So, um, I, you know, I, I think you can only improve your health, continue to improve it. So I'm super excited that I'm on a journey now because even looking like long-term at other health complications that I could have experienced from um, not doing the health and lifestyle changes, you know, I may mitigate those as well um, because of this. So it's very hopeful. It's very exciting. And I'm, I'm just super blessed that I came across this. Um, I was hesitant at first. I did push the button and then cancel one time on you because I was, I was hesitant. I was like, does he, does he really know? Is it really going to work for me? But it did. So I'm happy. I'm happy to be. Yeah, here. And I think that's, I think that's normal, especially when you're coming from a medical background. Um, how does it, how does this all fit with your nurse friends? I mean, you're a nurse, you've been trained medically, you've probably, um, you know, uh, what's the word looked after people with inflammatory arthritis. How does this fit in your sphere of friends and colleagues, the situation that you've got? And has it, has it really uh, created some eye, eyebrow raising conversations? Absolutely. So, and I love to talk about that. So I, so many times um, I had to leave the floor because of problems that I was having before I started the program. And, and people were always saying, isn't there just a medication? And I'm like, uh, yeah, I've been on these medications. I've been taking them. It's not working. And they were like, there should be a medication that just helps this. That just this. And I was like, yes, I'm looking for that too. Like, I, I really want that for me as well. Um, and then now that I have found, you know, the Patterson program and the lifestyle changes, the dietary changes and incorporated those. Now it's kind of shifted to I'm, um, I'm doing really well. And whenever I, I talk to people and who are my patients or even um, my friends that I work with or my colleagues, um, my coworkers, I'm always like whole food, plant-based diet, make sure you're doing your hot yoga. Like, blah, blah, blah. like, I'm like, this is what you need to be doing. You need to be taking high dose vitamin D. Like I, like, I'm just totally like, I'm so excited about it and passionate about it that like whenever I hear one of my colleagues be like oh I have a stomach ache from that potluck that we ate this afternoon I'm like you know if you would just eat a whole food plant-based diet you would feel really great and I think that it would help all of your health problems as well so even when it's not inflammatory arthritis related I'm always throwing that out there and I feel like people definitely have like felt that and um it's funny because I have a girl that sits next to me and every day like in the morning I bring a banana and 
and two oranges and two apples. And like, that's my like good morning breakfast. And she started doing it too. That's it's next doing. And I'm just like, that is so exciting. I love like this influence and that, you know, it's funny how originally it started as medication is the way. And then whenever I started to get off medication and move towards this direction, now I feel like I have kind of a little bit of influence over inspiring other people too, which is really great and exciting. Yeah, absolutely. And what about your nurse friends? Obviously, you know, um, you're going to have a lot of friends who are nurses. Um, are they, you know, are they interested in, in what you've achieved and thinking about also spreading the word or at least advocating more lifestyle changes to their patients? Um, I would say unless you've lived with inflammatory arthritis, you have absolutely no idea what that's like. And I would say for me personally, hearing your story about, you know, having like an elbow replacement and the severity of your symptoms, I look at my symptoms and I'm like, well, not that my symptoms aren't severe, but that is even worse than what I've experienced. And so I think unless you've been somebody that has even experienced it mildly, you would have no idea the, um, what it takes to, you know, to be able mm. to encourage that to somebody else. And, and, uh, whilst I was hoping that you might say something different, your answer fits exactly with my experience and what everyone else describes as well. Yeah. Um, you know, generally it's almost like, uh, you know, that game of Chinese whispers where one person says one thing and they pass it on. Well, it's not the best metaphor, but it's almost like the second person just decides not to not to pass the message on. Right. Exactly. It just sort of stops. It's like, oh wow, like my friend Ali has just transformed her life. She was on eleven medications and now she does lifestyle changes, whole food, plant based diet, lots of sweaty exercise. She doesn't need meds anymore. Um, why don't you tell everyone who's in agonizing pain, who's like depressed and mental health issues, and their whole family's falling apart? Oh no, I might just tell them to go take right. their drug. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not that. Not that. Yeah, it's just it just blows my mind that it, bad news travels to the end of the street, and good news just barely makes the neighbor, doesn't it? That's one hundred percent correct in my experience. Oh, so tell me a story. Um, yeah, two thousand and fifteen. You're working in the Navy Health Department as a nurse, and you are suddenly impacted with how you can work. Yep. So, um, for me personally, I was having problems that were coming and going. It was kind of like, I would say, um, I read about palindromic rheumatism and it kind of fit that description at first where it was like off and on symptoms. And that became consistent over time. And I was cleared to go overseas and I, um, I did go overseas and my symptoms just worsened. I was in a terrible place um, where I was having trouble with walking. I was having trouble unbending my fingers. Um, I'd wake up and I just, I was completely stiff and I couldn't open my hands um, and move my wrists. And so I would, I don't know, I did all these all these tricks where I would do Epsom salts and ice and heat and braces. And I was referred to many places, neurology, ortho, occupational therapy, acupuncture, like I did all the things. I did all the medications, the Humira, the prednisone, the Cosentex, the Cymbalta, the Gabapentin, all the things. And um, nothing was sustainably made it better aside from taking prednisone every day, which anybody in the community, I feel like of rheumatoid arthritis knows the side effects of prednisone. And so not being on high doses of 20, 30 milligrams of prednisone a day, isn't good for anybody, even though it, it dramatically helps your pain. So, um, I been working to get off that. That's the only thing that I would say that I'm still, I still do about 2.5, um, on the occasion, if I'm having some, some symptoms, which, um, I don't have to do often, which is really great, but, um, yeah, so I'm overseas having all kinds of problems, referred many places, nothing's working for me. And then I finally got my diagnosis when I came back to the States, um, in 2017, um, and then started, um, the rheumatology journey. So, and I've had a really great rheumatologist. Um, however, we don't see eye to eye as far as, um, natural methods. I remember specifically when I had met him, I said, um, I really want to try a more natural approach to treatment. And he said, all of the turmeric in the world is not going to help your inflammatory arthritis. 
And I was like, okay, I'll do the Humira then. And that's when I made the decision to go in that direction, which that never worked for me. I know a lot of people experience relief from that. It, it didn't help me personally. So, um, so yeah. Can I, can I jump in there? A couple sure. of things. I mean, um, it's a fair call what he said. It's true. All the turmeric or curcumin, which is the active component in the world, is not going to do the trick. And that's true. Yeah. But um, that's not what you've done. And that's yeah. not what we recommend. In right. fact, I can't remember the last time I said to someone, take turmeric or take curcumin. I just, yeah. it must be years because it isn't effective no. compared to what, what you've done and what our audience knows what we need to do, which yeah. is, we have to throw everything at it. And as you said before, it's not just the diet and it's not just the exercise, although those two are the biggest two pillars of the natural side of self-improvement. It's also the supplementation. It's also the mental health side of things and getting the, uh, the, the gut-brain axis uh, not being counterproductive. You know, it takes everything and it takes everything at an extreme level. I think we're going to get into that with you because, you know, you want, you, you were mentioning to me before a Facebook comment that I'd like you to bring up in just a moment. Sure. And, and so um, this is where it's hard for the doctors to sort of be able to come on board because they don't realize that um, when you put all these things together, which is hard in a scientific study, right? There's no one study that shows, look, this person went and did this, 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 because no one funds those studies because there's too many variables because you, you can't just test the one thing, which everyone wants to test the one thing, but life isn't one thing. Healing right. isn't one thing. This is like, this is systemic healing to a systemic disease. And so that's why the studies aren't there that support the whole picture. We've got the studies for the diet. We've got studies for exercise. We've got studies for vitamin D. We've got studies for all the stuff but we haven't got the study of the Patterson program, which people pressing me for, but it's tricky to, to, to put together. So anyway, so there's that comment that I, I, I wanted to make uh, about the, what the rheumatologist said. And then there's another thing you said, which, which now eluded me as to another comment that I was going to make. So anyway, that, that I think is important. Tell us about, um, so, so continue your story, I think, first, and then I'll make a note here to come back to the Facebook comment that you mentioned before we hit record um, and tell us what happened. Okay, so you spoke to him, weren't quite eye to eye because he, he downplayed the natural approach, but then you went and did that anyway. Yes, I did. So I, I tried, um, due to what he said, incorporating um, both like lifestyle change medication and um, and, uh, dietary changes, but it just, I was still having so many problems and it took a while to find the balance for me, um, which I don't need medication really like these big biologics and things like that, where, um, he's prescribing or many rheumatologists are showing, I, um, I really don't need those. And so, um, it took a while to find the balance of what worked for me. And it was a huge, um, it propelled me forward using the, pro the Patterson program. Um, and just the lifestyle changes, I would say of the, the hot yoga helped me tremendously, like, and the, the vitamin D, like I was doing well as far as the diet. And I was like, okay, I'm doing well. I'm still having pain, but I'm doing a lot better than I was before. But once I did that vitamin D and I did the, um, the hot yoga four times a week, I was like, wow, I'm really cooking now. Like I am, I don't have pain. Like I'm waking up, I'm pain free. Like I'm doing great. And like, if I get a little twinge here or there, I'm like, there's people out there who have this a lot worse than me and I'm going in the right direction. So I, I'm very hopeful that eventually if I have a little twinge that that will go away. But I also liked what you said, um, about the mental health side and the, um, the spiritual side as well, because I didn't, um, actually write that down to include that. Um, I did once, I. uh, I started the Patterson program. I also started, um, mental health. So I did therapy. Cause I was like, you're exactly how you said, I was like, I'm going to attack this from every angle, lifestyle change, um, spiritual change, uh, physical changes, dietary changes. I'm going to do everything because I want to get better. And, um, and so I did, I pursued therapy and Bible studies. Cause that's my personal Christian faith is, you know, um, to do that. So I, I really wanted to get dive deeper into those things. And I feel like 
everything, all of those components together helped me um, not to need any of these medications. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm really glad you brought that up because I totally agree that it takes all of that together. And there is no studies that are, you know, just just this whole thing in the whole picture. So I, I believe that if you can improve those things, you'll go in the right direction. If you can hit all of those things, better sleep, um, you know, supplementation, all those things. So yeah, definitely. But as far as my story, so yeah, I came back to the States. I got linked up with the rheumatologist. Um, and I, you know, for the last two years, I've been seeing the same rheumatologist. I did get a second opinion that was largely the same opinion as my current rheumatologist. So, um, you know, I had spoken with him and he wanted me to try, uh, couple months ago, Cosentix, because I, I started the, the Patterson program prior to Cosentix, but it's taken months. Like that's another thing is it, it doesn't just start working right away. You have, it takes a long time. And so I was like, well, in the meantime, if I can help with the medications and the things, then I'll try. Um, so the last time I talked to him was a couple months ago and he started me on that. I did two of those injections and it didn't work for me. The same as Humira didn't work for me. So I wasn't like very surprised that I didn't have a positive um, reaction to that. So um, it it's the same, like with the Humira, it works for maybe like two or three days and then it goes away and then it stops working altogether. So I don't know um, other people's experience. That was my experience. Um, and then since those last few months, I would say probably five to six months is where my dramatic improvements came in. And that's where I, where I started the, the vitamin D and the, the yoga. So, um, yeah, it's really took off from there. Make a really good point here that I want to reinforce is that, um, sometimes people question the diet and this is, I'm so glad you brought this up because a few emails in the last couple of weeks, I had to address this in length and now I can just talk about it so everyone can hear it. Um, so some people say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm not really making much progress or I'm, I'm sort of at a plateau just from doing the diet. Well, first of all, as we've already said, diet is never enough on its own. I think I did a podcast with Cecile, go back about 10 podcasts or 12, 15 podcasts. And the title of the podcast is diet is never enough. Okay. So it's not just the diet. That is just uh, like, think of that as the concrete slab from which we're then got to build the house from. Get the diet right. If it's and that is the that is the diet that is not just useful for inflammatory arthritis, but will extend your life, will reduce the risk factor for all other diseases, as you said, Ali. So we need a low fat, whole food, plant based diet. Okay. So if that's not doing anything, don't change your diet. Don't go looking for other miracle stories or miracle cures of random supplements of things from other parts of the world that are unique and bizarre and shiny objects. No. You've set your concrete foundation. From there, now look at what else needs to build your house strong and solid again. And for you, that was the exercise. It was looking at vitamin D levels. It was mental health. And that's right. So just put the diet in place and actually forget about the diet and then work on all the other stuff. That's, that's what needs to be, to, to be done. And all the other stuff, in inverted commas, is usually for most people the exercise it really is it really is and and it's like meditation right so the mind gets in the way of doing things that prevent the mind from being active and it it's self it's self sustaining its own activity levels and so the mind says don't go meditate you've got to pay that bill you've got to call so and so you it'll get in the anything that will stop it from being stopped for a while in the same way the mind says don't go exercise because that's going to hurt and if you exercise well enough and hard enough the mind then also tends to just go into a, almost like a, a a neutral state and that also enables you know that's good for you but the mind doesn't like that either so we actually have to understand that our own mind prevents us from doing some of these things that are beneficial. And it's a weird paradox. But if, and that's where everyone gets stuck. We've got to go and do these extra things on top of the diet. Right. Forget the diet. It's just a concrete slab. 
Cause you think like you, and then also if you focus everything around just your diet, you're constantly yes. like what, well, I did this one thing wrong. Or like, you're constantly like, what did I do? Like all these things. And you're so hyper-focused on what you're going to eat that it's like, no, go out and enjoy some hot yoga, go out and enjoy a walk, go out. Like, you know, if you can, I know that people have it a lot worse than I've had, but, um, mm you know, if you can do those things and enjoy your life, then, um, you can also incorporate your diet, um, to help you, but you have something else that's keeping your mind off of food and your intake and every, every little thing that goes into your mouth. Well, I'm going to punish myself because I, I ate whatever. And like, this made me flare. And it's like, maybe that specific thing didn't make you flare, you know, in, but you're constantly questioning. So I think like, you know, stick it to the diet, um, keep, keep your progress. Um, you know, keep a, like, as you say, keep, um, a, a diary of your progress because that's so helpful. You're like, once you start getting better, you kind of forget where you came from. And mm. so that's, I feel like you've said before, keep a pain diary, keep your goals of why you want to get better and then be able to see where you came from in the past. So you're like, I am meeting my goals. I am doing more. I'm like staying awake longer without pain. I am doing exercises that I w couldn't do before. Like I could do so many things like the crow pose. I have such bad wrists. I was like, there's no way I'll ever be able to do a, a crow pose again. Um, things like that. And I'm getting back there, which is amazing compared to where I was before. So definitely I recommend to anybody who's going through this, keep your pain diary, write your goals down, um, and incorporate every, everything from mental health to your lifestyle changes, to your, to your exercise, your diet, all those things. Don't just hyper-focus on your diet. Absolutely. And I don't think we can labor this enough because, they, they, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, I respond in the way that you and I have just been discussing. And then I still get a question back and someone still emails me back and says, you know, like a week later, I've just tried to introduce, I don't know, X, Y, Z food, broccoli or something. And I, and I, and I had a reaction. So I'm frustrated. I don't know what to do. And, and, and I feel like, um, you know, I'm frustrated because I'm trying to convey the same thing that you know I've been discussing. And so the truth is that if that person goes for a half an hour, you know, session on a treadmill, mm -hmm. or if they went for a 15 minute swim, mm -hmm. they could probably eat the broccoli yeah. without any inflammation. Uh -huh. There is a there is a way of accelerating the dietary introductions, and it is by becoming fitter. The, you know, the exercise improves the microbiome it, and, it, and in a way I'm not certain as to how it works, it reduces the food sensitivity. So we use the exercise to get more foods back into us and, and so on. So we've, we've, we've re I, I think that this will be a massive aha moment for a lot of people who were like you were, right? You were, you were going well on the diet, but it was when you set that as your foundation and then said, okay, right. what else do I need to do? Not how do I, maybe I'm doing the wrong diet. No, what else do I need to do? Right. So that's great. So give us, give us that, teach us now, Ali. Let's say you're sitting next to someone on an airplane. The plane's going to land mm -hmm. in seven minutes and you're going to have to get off the airplane and the person stranger you were sitting next to has just mentioned to you that they've got inflammatory arthritis. Oh, You've got I need seven, seven minutes. hours to talk to them, not seven minutes. <laughs> seven see, what hours. You, see what you can do in the next few minutes. See, <laughs> like I want to, I want to hear your pep talk and the instructions. Okay, I would say, oh, Clint, it's so nice to meet you. I also struggled with inflammatory arthritis really bad. Um, I want you to look up the Patterson program. I don't know if you've heard of that before, um, but it's something that I've been implementing um, in addition to you know supplementation and lifestyle changes. Diet changes. It incorporates all of that. So, um, I would definitely recommend checking that out. Um, and then just know that there is hope because it does feel hopeless. It feels lonely. Um, you know, your friends don't understand your family doesn't understand. Nobody understands. Clint Patterson understands though. <laughs> and hey, but Ali, but Ali, you're really young. You don't look like you have arthritis. Oh yeah. I get that a lot. You're so young though. You have so far to go. It's just going to get worse. All these things. And I'm like, Thank you for the encouragement. However, <laughs> however, what I've been doing has been super helpful to me. Um, and I would, I would be like, can I have your, your information so we can exchange? Um, because I think, um, that 
I could send to you and we could hold each other accountable. And, you know, we could talk about a lifestyle changes. I, I wouldn't mind being your friend and let's make it a relationship. Like, I'd love to talk to you about what you've struggled with because your struggles aren't like the exact thing of my struggles. So yeah, totally. That would be my, my seven minutes of just like, but, tell me about what's what do on. I have to eat? I don't have to become one of those weird vegans. <laughs> But there's so many options. And that's the thing. It's hard when you're a social eater and you go out to the restaurants a lot and you're like, what am I going to eat? Or I go over to my friend's house and they're like, what can you eat? Like, I want to make something that you can eat. And you're like, oh, this is what I eat. And they're like, like, I don't know if I want to eat that. But actually, like there's Pinterest, millions of things on Pinterest that you can look up as far as vegan diet, as far as whole food, plant based diet and find out what works for you. Like I said, I, I eat fish too sometimes times, three times a week. And that works for me. And I think it's different for everybody. Um, and definitely a hundred percent agree with what you said, as far as like your lifestyle is going to enhance dietary changes. So get healthy with your, your dietary changes, get on the green diet, green smoothies all day, green smoothies, green smoothies. I drink a green smoothie every single day. And so I can't recommend that enough to somebody spinach, kale, get it all in there, find the, what works for you, what you like. Um, and then I think, yeah, it's hard for some people, but you can make it really, really good. Um, and you can make it, you can make smoothies and stuff that you'll love and you'll feel the way that you're going to feel will far outweigh missing McDonald's French fries, which makes me <laughs> so terrible anyways. So yeah, I just, I, I can't even look at that food anymore. I can't smell that food. No, like <laughs> green smoothies, salads. I love big salads. I love to put fish on my salads. I love to, um, make baked sheets of, um, of vegetables. And I love to put, um, like asparagus on the stove and make it in water. Like those things you can make so delicious. And I'm a terrible cook. You can ask my husband, but you can make <laughs> them really delicious. So totally. Great. Great. So still role playing here. Um, actually before we just something you mentioned, uh, uh, with the fish thing, I find I'll probably get a ton of comments saying, Hey, Ali said she eats fish. Is that okay? Just yeah. to clarify, um, a lot of your, a lot of the majority portion of your healing progress was done without the fish. You've added that because the family liked to be able to eat with you and so forth. Am I correct? Yes. Correct. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Beautiful. Um, and so, um, you know, what we find is that you know my 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 parallelism to that is that with nuts right so i couldn't eat nuts for the longest time but then after you feel like you're doing really good you find that you can eat some things that are higher in fat whether it be in your case an animal based uh fat source and or in my case uh it was nuts and we just find that things that were otherwise challenging in the past we can now eat does that mean if i only ate nuts 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 all the time that it would be good for me absolutely not no. um so we got to be careful but we find we do develop a, a sense of uh robustness uh that allow us to to eat the sort of higher tier risk or less less of the healing and more of the uh calorie dense options Back to the role playing. I'm sitting next to you on the plane. We've got a few minutes left to, to go through this. You've told me that I've got lots of options that I can eat within the plant based thing. Um, you've told me not to do lots of green smoothies. Um, but what if, but, but, and in the role playing, my, my rheumatologist said that diet won't do anything. Uh -huh. Well, I, um, I think if you just change your diet, it won't do anything. If that's the only thing you're changing, then it might not. Um, one thing that I did have tested and have had consistently tested um, throughout the last four years since my symptoms was my vitamin D levels. And I was always like markedly deficient, um, which I know is consistent with many people who suffer from inflammatory arthritis. So I would recommend to the person that I'm sitting next to, like, have you had that done? What's yours look like? I had been supplementing. My doctor said a supplement with a thousand IU per day of um, vitamin D because you are deficient. I did that. I did that for a year, maybe, or six months to a year, um, and then had it had it retested. And I was 16, which is still low. They want you to be at 30. And so he said, increase it to 2,000. I increased 
years to 2000 and it was unchanged again in my neck. And so, so I'm like, this isn't working. But once I started increasing, 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 and then I started doing um, the high dose, which is like, I think it's like 50,000 um, IU for like a week or like six week period. Um, and a then week, right? Yeah, a week yeah, for a week. Yeah, years. just to clarify, folks, that's fifty thousand IU per week. Week, yes, right? not for not six yet. weeks, and yep. then come back down. Finally, once I started getting my levels to a normal level, my pain was decreasing, which was yeah. really awesome. So, I definitely yeah. would recommend to that person as well. If you haven't had a vitamin D level checked, get your vitamin D checked. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the feedback we've been getting so far um, from the episode that I did with Dr. Somerville. Uh, which is an episode, uh, a podcast episode going back about maybe, I don't know, a, a month ago. Um, the feedback has been excellent. People have been seeing, uh, you know, improvements to their sleep, especially, um, and uh, just a feeling of increased well being from supplementing the D. It's too soon to see whether or not the, the general feedback has been also been inflammation reduction. But um, in your case, you know, you've reported that and uh, you were at it for a while, like a year of 1,000 a day and then increased to 2,000 a day. It's not like you just just started too, right? So you've been at that for a while. So, you know, I I absolutely agree. My guy, my recommendations are to aim for your levels to be at the at just within the normal range at the upper end. So just so the doctor's happy. And you're happy. So doctor won't freak out if it's over the maximum, but right. you're happy because it's really high. If the range is between arbitrary units, zero to a hundred, then get it in the nineties. That's what we're trying to achieve. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, now it's open mic. You can tell, you can now talk about anything you think's really important now to, to anything else we're missing, uh, or you just want to encourage people, whatever you want to say now you can go for it. Sure. Um, so really I would just say, stay encouraged. Like it, it's so hard when you're in the trenches and you're hurting and you're, your social life and your, uh, your work life and things are suffering because you're in so much pain and disability. You can't do anything and you can't, it's hard to be happy and thankful when you're, you're constantly swollen and in pain and having trouble moving. I know what that's like. I do a hundred percent and it's awful, but there is hope and it, there little improvements take it one day at a time just because you feel worse today than you felt yesterday doesn't mean you're not improving and i think that was really hard for me because i wanted to just fix it now i wanted one thing to just focus hyper focus on and then correct that and then feel better each and every day but it was you know like we talked about encompassing all of the things um and just realizing that just because you feel worse today than yesterday doesn't mean that tomorrow you're not going to feel better again to where you were before so highly um recommend staying positive um and just please 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 look at doing bikram yoga and hot yoga because and get your vitamin D checked and have a green smoothie every day. I think that's, that's my, that's my recipe for success. Speaking of recipes, what, what's your favorite green smoothie? Um, so I, I do, um, coconut water with, mm. um, a little bit of oat milk and I put in a full frozen, uh, large banana with, um, a little tiny bit of kale. Like I really, I don't go heavy on the kale because of the texture. If you put too much, it can ruin mm. the texture of your smoothie. So I put in a little bit of kale, but then I load it with spinach. So it's extremely green. I love the color and the vibrance of that, of the color. I put in chia seeds. Um, and then I, I put in a little bit of um, like an almond butter or like some kind of nut butter. And then, yeah, it, it's amazing. And you just mm -hmm. blend it up and you can drink the entire thing in like an hour. If you like make an entire big, like, yeah. And just drink it over an hour and you'll be full and you'll feel amazing. And yeah. And it's like a whole meal for you. So. Totally. Absolutely. That's a great one. I love it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now I almost forgot. But anyone who's been wondering, is he going to ask about these Facebook comments? Um, let's yeah. go there now. I think because, and what we're about to do is basically pay tribute to anyone who's following the Patterson program, anyone who's making it their life mission to get well. And what we're about to do is, is say right now, 
we get how hard this is. This is extremely challenging. And it is with open arms and with huge respect that we pay tribute to the efforts that you are putting in right now because it's so, so challenging to be able to, uh, you know, um, uh, shift the needle on this naturally. And so uh, wherever you are right now, listening, watching, whatever you're doing, thank you for putting your energy in this area because it is a challenging path, but it is worth it, regardless of whether or not you improve 1% the next month or 1% the next year. It's better than worsening. Or it's better than worsening at a rate that you would if you just ate a Western diet and did nothing. Okay, so you had a comment around this uh, on a Facebook uh, post, didn't you, Ali? Yeah, yeah. Did you want me to read it? Because I don't sure. remember. I don't. I have to go to my email real quick and pull it up. I think because the only reason I have it in there is because I think you liked it, which I was like, oh my gosh, Clint <laughs> liked my my comment. <laughs> Let me see if I can pull it up because I don't have it like readily available. Um. I don't know. Do you have it readily available? No, no, but uh, you can paraphrase it. No one's going to double check anything. Okay. Well, I have commented because I really wanted to meet you and I really wanted to thank you um, personally and just be like, this has been such an inspiration for me. Um, I went from working um, limited hours. I got put on limited duty in the Navy. So um, I worked minimal hours. I only worked day shift. Um, and I worked in a very easy job because my, everything got changed. Um, and I started the Patterson program and I started the whole food diet and I started lifestyle changes. And now I work a full-time job and I do everything that a regular person does. And I don't have pain in my mind all day long. So, um, I think I put something to that effect in there that I started off, um, not working this full-time job. And then since I've incorporated this, I'm now working full-time. Um, I've gotten a promotion. I'm now, um, the lead, the lead nurse of my team at work. Um, and so, yeah. And then I, I think I said, um, I, I can't remember to what effect because I know I also messaged you um, or messaged the Patterson program um, directly in the progress report. And so I, um, I said that I just love the way you speak to people. I love the way that you um, are eloquent when you speak to them. I love that you listen to what they have to say and you write down so that you can like really focus on what they're saying. And I just love that about you. And I think that it's very welcoming and it's like it it makes you want to do the program. So I think I said something to that effect as well. Mm, thank you. All that stuff's very, very lovely. And congratulations on your improvements to, uh, you know, being able to handle much more workload responsibility and comes with that, the stress and the time commitment, the out of work thoughts that need to be applied to your job. You know, the whole thing just becomes more of a more consuming and it becomes more of your life occupies more of your of who you are um and then uh that then then also you mentioned to me there was a simple comment that someone said that oh why don't you just go do the program yes. or something. Oh, that that's comment. the one yes. i wanted to that was like, I think that one was like directly under mine or somewhere close to it where they said, oh yeah, because, um, paying, you know, a couple hundred dollars for a simple fix. It, wouldn't you think that everyone would do that or whatever, if that was the case that you could just, in, instead of thousands of dollars in the medical industry or whatever, just pay your couple hundred bucks and get cured by Clint Patterson. And I was, and I said to Clint earlier, um, if it was easy, then yes, everybody would pay a couple hundred dollars and do it. Then yes, that, that would make logical sense, but it's not easy. It's easier to inject myself with Humira. It's easier to inject myself with Cosentix and take a thousand oral pills than it is to do the Patterson program. So if you're looking for easy, then okay, the Patterson program is not for you, but, um, yes, the diet, the lifestyle, the hot yoga, the vitamin D, the green smoothies, if you're looking for feeling better without medication, then yes, the Patterson program is for you and a hundred dollars or a couple hundred to have personal one-on-one -on -one help. If that is what is more helpful to you and holds you accountable, then yes, then that is for you. The Patterson program is for you hundred percent. I, I, um, was thinking about this, you know, we also what also needs to be 
um, offered as reassurance is if someone's still sitting on the fence after listening to dozens, I think we're up to 158 episodes or whatever of this podcast. If someone's still sitting on the fence and have listened to a lot of these and thinking, oh, no, well, Ali and Clint have just told me it's too hard. I'm not going to do it. I just want to say, I want to say this is you can do it at the smallest possible level and still feel proud of yourself and still get on the healing path in, in, in that very small step forward. So, for example, it might be, look, I don't, I don't, let's say you're just totally against it, but you're curious and you're only capable of making some small changes. Why not just make Monday night meat free night, right? Something like that. Instead of going for a walk every couple of days uh, with one of your friends, why not start the day with a walk every day? Mm-hmm. And why not just um, go and get some more sunshine um, early afternoon when you might you know, lie on the couch or maybe you're at work. Okay, you're at work and you're a high career champion. You step outside and make a phone call, God forbid, like pull the legs of your trousers up so you get some sunshine on your legs or something. Okay. Do so, something. But do and if something. you're in that much pain, it will motivate you to do everything. You'll be like, That's I right. don't want to be here. Fix yeah. this, anything to fix this. So it's very motivating when you have pain behind it to want to do these things but if you can't and it's hard for you start with the little things for sure totally agreed and because when you get a little progress isn't it isn't it motivating isn't it um (laughs) it's almost like uh it's catching it's exciting it's like a fire that that continues to burn and get bigger because you think well if i feel better from just doing that what if and once you start asking what if the mind just takes off and you get pumped and excited yeah, totally. Um, yeah. Especially with the hot yoga, you'll see your progress. You'll be like, at first I couldn't do this, but now I can do this. And it's amazing. And like, I can't say it enough times because it just is so helpful that mm. hot yoga all day, every day. Well, up in your part of the world, um, Katie, who is now becoming a yoga teacher after being so, so challenged with her physical limitations only a few years ago, from doing Patterson programs, starting in her case, Bikram yoga, yeah. doing something like 500 classes in 18 months, something like insane. Uh, she's now off and learning to be a yoga instructor. And that's how much it's impacted on her life. And, uh, you know, you're, you're also seeing such tremendous benefits. And who knows where this could go? You, you're doing wonderful in your career right now, but you could have a parallel career you know, becoming a right, yogi. Becoming yoga you know. instructor. Totally. I would be so open to that. And also like one of my life goals is to run a marathon. I ran track in college and that's always, but once I started having all these problems, that goal kind of went out the window and I was like, I'm never going to be able to run a marathon and that's okay. I'll just stick with hot yoga. But now I'm like, I think I could run a marathon. <laughs> so I'm going that's to keep what? doing everything I'm doing and start training for that. Have you read Born to Run by, have you read that book yet? No. Buy buy that book and your motivation for marathoning will skyrocket. I will definitely. Have you Uh, run one personally as well? I haven't, but I was cross-country champion at school. Um, But let me just put a little disclaimer there. There were only only about 50 runners and I only won it when I was in year 12. And so some of the competitors, because my school was tiny, right? So... The guy who comes second was my PE teacher, right? <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> right? And, and, and he was like 55 at the time and I'm running as a 17-year-old, so, <laughs> right? I wasn't exactly like state level, um, but, but you know, I was lanky and built like a, built like a long-distance runner. runner but, yeah. yeah but, but, no, I never um, – I never uh, pursued it uh, anything other than just recreational and but I would push myself like I've always had that thing where I would in my internal dialogue to achieve is is like the whips on me you know so yeah. I can be falling apart but inside I'm like more more you know <laughs> Yes, that's like that's the making of a very good runner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm weaker in yoga. I'm not. I don't have that same inside. I'm like, oh, I did this two days ago. My muscles will be tired. I don't need to be working them this hard. And I. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> then no. you should definitely go for running the marathon. I highly correct. Recommend. Correct. I'll correct. meet That's you it. in Australia and we can run it in the same race. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> okay. Fun. Well, thank you very much for this. It's highly enjoyable, and um, I hope everyone has um, had, a, had had some inspiration and go and make a make a smoothie and go and take some steps. And if they're already crushing it, then refine with some more things. You know, add add more. Right. What else can you do? Yeah. And win that arm wrestle. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yeah. All totally. right, Ali. I really well, appreciate your time. Thank you very much. You too. You're doing wonderful. Keep up the fantastic work. Thanks. I hope we're in touch again sometime.